there are two races and two realities and two ages of man. Each age is appropriate to a stage of our existence. The first age is the age of liberalism. The age of liberalism. The age of liberalism is the age in which man strives to be free of the regulatory situation created by God. God's authority over the world was usurped by the state and its regulatory power, as devised by Satan. Satan devised the doctrine of social justice to legitimize the state. Social justice germinated in the Garden of Eden and is encapsulated in our legal rights, as given by the state. Eve became the world's first feminist and the first victim turned social justice warrior. Adam was the world's first liberal male when he abdicated his leadership role to feminist Eve. God told Adam and Eve that on the day they ate of the fruit of the tree they would surely die. Death is a loss of identity, illustrated by the ejection of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. Death is the loss of citizenship in his kingdom. When we cease to be members of God's kingdom, we are spiritually dead. Another way of seeing this is seeing it as the day that spirit became flesh. Adam and Eve saw that they were naked and were ashamed. Adam and Eve made in the image of God became creatures of flesh condemned to toil, as flesh, to keep flesh together. Adam and Eve viewed themselves as victims. They did not take responsibility for their decisions. They hid, modeling the fear of a victim. But their cover was symbolically useless. Adam and Eve were ejected from the garden. They were given clothes created by the killing of animals to show the blood of their sin was on them. Flesh kills flesh. The killing of animals for clothes and later for food demonstrates the enmity between man and creation and between man and God. Israel wanted a king as the pagans had. They wanted to make their own state. They wanted to exercise power. The power of the state is exercised as law. The law gives the state power over the property that belongs to God. Law puts the state in the throne of God. Law equals, 1. Opinion codified into a regulation administrated by means of judicial coercion. See judicial coercion, 2. Opinion issued as a regulation backed up by force. The Honest Man's Dictionary Liberalism reaches maturity in statism and enters old age in the gerontology of globalism and crony capitalism. The culmination and final fruition of liberalism is the dotage of a senile and mentally incapacitated, one-world government that owns and controls everything. Nimrod gave birth to the state when he founded Babylon. Babylon developed the institutions in use today. Fiat currency double-entry bookkeeping, the state, law, judicial courts and debt were all developed in or around Babylon. The age of liberalism is marked by the creation of social costs, socialism and liberalism, externalized costs or social parasitism, the doctrine of social justice, actions without accountability, the loss of ownership rights to what is created. Democracy and the rule of man by man. The rise of the self-directed, unaccountable, morally self-contained individuals. The rise of an interventionist or authoritarian states. Institutions that legitimize and systemize rapin. The power of taxation exercised by the state. Erosion of the distinction between good and evil, its relativization a culture of victimhood and intersectionality, the existence of liabilities and double-entry accounting, a loss of responsibility, a denial of accountability, the externalization of costs, the existence of pollution, inflation, unemployment and other social costs, a large and growing bureaucracy, growing interventionists' policies, the growth of rapacious organizations, polities in which might makes right, in the end, rapin, justifies the means, the polarization of society into rich and poor, power disparities, inequality, 
Taxation The Age of Faith We have faith or we have nothing. Without belief we are consumed by doubt. Without faith we have nothing but fear, which eventually destroys us. When a lover has no faith in his beloved the fear consumes him. We have a right to faith. No one can take this from us. We have a right to what our faith produces. We have a right to what our faith creates. We have no valid claim on the products and services produced by others, in faith. We are accountable for the costs we create. No one is obliged to pay our costs. We are not obliged to pay their costs. We are not entitled to what other produce. We own what we create and have no legitimate claim on anything created by others. Without these conditions faith is impossible. Unemployment, pollution, taxation, marginalization, debt and so on, are social costs. Social costs are costs externalized onto society and future generations. When faith turns to fear human beings become a means to an end and the end is the alleviation of fear. Equality is defined by faith. By faith we own what we author. We are not obligated by costs created by others. I have no right to impose my costs onto you and you have no right to expect me to pay costs you created. Do not freeload is the categorical imperative of faith. Only those who fear seek to deceive and oppress others by externalizing costs onto them. The claim that might makes right in the end justifies the means is a teaching based on a lack of faith. No one has the right to impose their costs onto others. No one has the authority to usurp ownership rights. No one has the moral authority to impose social costs onto future generations or the rest of us. That you are stronger or have more guns does not justify rapping. The age of faith is marked by the elimination of social costs, full accountability for costs created, the establishment of a zero tax rate, flat organizational structures, Absence of power disparities. Organizations that operate by the principle of subsidiarity. The existence of Christian markets. Charitable enterprises operating as not-for-profit replacing capitalism. A respect for property rights. Human rights respected. Legal rights rejected. Social agendas eliminated. The state operating as an administrative body, not a prescriptive one. The elimination of all social costs, including pollution, unemployment, debt, taxation, inflation, interest rates, public service, and centralized currency systems. Social goods produced by markets as a charitable good.